Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we have almost all the usual suspects. We've got Mike Zeno, the Zen master. Breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. How are you, Mike? Oh, I'm doing great. Well, hey, uh, glad to hear you asking. Thank you. Good to see you. And I'm just going to go through everybody else really quickly. Dude, buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Boston. We had the technician, Eric Peterson. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. And last but not least, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. So we got a great topic, I think. And it's a really important topic because if you don't get this right, the whole process goes bad. It's county research. And the question that we had from boot camp, and by the way, our next boot camp is April 23rd to the 25th. Go to landgeek.com forward slash boot camp and register because we, I think we do have limited spots on Zoom. Um, and do that. Make sure you get a spot. Is what info must haves does a county must be able to provide relatively easily when selecting a county? So, we want to, so not only should the county be, let's say, quote unquote, good, which means that other investors are there, right? We know deals can definitively be done there, but what makes it easy to work with? And why not start with you, Zen Master? Okay. Um, so I think of a few things, but I could tell you that um, I think we're, I'm needing l uh, less and less uh, contact from the county. There's different services out there now, like we use uh, data tree and whatnot. So a lot of things that traditionally I would go to the county for, I can find from third party, I guess you'd say services. So, but as far as the county itself, I'd like to be able to, especially during the due diligence phase, when we're doing county research, like when we're going to mail there, like what the use that the property has. So if I want to have our team reach out and talk to the, the county, I want them to be accessible. I know there are some counties that will just ring forever and uh, there won't be any contact. So you may not get a definitive answer uh, as to, you know, different aspects of what can be done with the property. So I guess I'd start with that, you know, I, the, something that they're actually going to pick the phone up and be uh, and communicate with you. Cause I, uh, I know there are some counties that aren't very good at that. Aren't very good at the uh, communication. They, maybe they get a lot of inquiries. Maybe they don't have a short staff or maybe, I don't know. There could be a lot of reasons, but I, I, I know the, I know the reason Mike Why? it's because it's they're a government employee. They're getting paid no matter what. That's why. Well, I sort of that's, have a that's why. That's too, why so I don't really have a. Out. I don't really have a. I don't really have a say. I'm sort of. I'm sort of a government employee myself. So, I, I don't know how I. I don't know what to say to that. Well, well, but Mike, let's face it, right? If the house is on fire, you don't have to be nice to the homeowner. Correct. You are a nice guy, but you're getting paid either way. Your, your customer service is not really... I think we're very compassionate. Yeah, of course. And you're a hero. <laughs> no. You're saving lives because you want to save lives. Someone in that, in that government employee office might be having a bad day and they, might, and they could take it out on you and they're getting paid either well, way. Well, a lot of times I think it's because the people they, that inside the, you know, maybe the uh, administration, they don't always treat them the best. So they, I think there's a secret to dealing with them is showing them that they are valuable and showing them that you do care about them because they may not get a lot of that from, you know, higher up in the, in the administration. So uh, there is a secret to sauce to sort of, um, you know, they come across that with that sort of, you know, rough attitude. But, you know, if you you can break right. them with some with some politeness, I agree with what you're saying. And in, in, right. in a certain context. And if Jeff Axton is listening to this, Jeff, this is a good tip for you. He's because he, he is. Admitted, <laughs> he is. That's right. He is uh, in charge of a whole shift. That's a good point. But he's yeah. very nice. I, I got to say he. he yeah, no, he's no, he's great. He's great. I joke. <laughs> We're off to a great start. I'll bro call me. <laughs> Once again, poor Mike Zeno, man. Mike and Mark, just here we go. Here we go. Um. Anyways, I did like what you brought up about Data Tree, and for those of you that are interested in a discount on Data Tree, uh, to get that data, just go to datatree.com forward slash the land geek, um, and we have a special discount uh, for you there. Um. Scott Bossman, dude, buddy, Nightcap OG. What about you? What what does a county need to provide you relatively easily when you're selecting a county? 
Well, I agree with Mike. I think there should be, um, I, I like it when there are people at the county who are very willing to help. You get to know these people. Uh, so, so communication is one thing. Resources are another thing. I mean, I think it, the county needs to have a good GIS site. And uh, I love being able to pull data from the county easily. If I can go to the county website and find the back taxes, uh, you know, find a possibly uh, deed copies online, that type of thing. It's not necessary, but I love a county like that that has those online resources. So um, you're going to touch on one, Mark, that I wanted to, to steal. I'll let, you, I'll let you touch on that one. But um, you, know, you can steal my thunder all day long. I mean, Simply File is huge, right? Like uh, how many times when I first started out did I snail mail something to a county that wasn't on Simply File and I was 20 cents off on a check or something and they snail it, snail mail it back to me and it takes, you know, a month and a half to get a deed recorded because I made some clerical error uh, on the deed. And with Simply File, it's amazing because if you've made a clerical error on the deed, uh, they get back to you same day. Sometimes it's a very easy fix and the deed still gets recorded that day. So uh, that's another uh, resource that I'd like the county to have. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't even want to work in counties that don't have Simplify personally. But I'd love to know what, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tay Litchfield thinks. Yeah, I mean, this is all really good. I definitely echo what everyone just mentioned and said really for me it comes down to is the information easily accessible and how difficult is it to use the county's resources At the end of the day i'm not going to be the one using them i'm going to outsource it to a va and so i need it to be user friendly uh in addition to that i want to know ideally i'd like to be able to pay my taxes online too that's that's kind of a big one for me right now is can i go online and pay taxes if I have to print out, certify, you know, send a check and then hope that it got applied correctly, that's kind of another nightmare. So I guess the big one for me is taxes online. Can I pay my taxes online? Can you pay your taxes online? I, you know, that's that's one that um, we haven't really thought about a whole lot. We haven't really talked about it. That's a great one. Wow. So record online, nice. taxes online. You know, nobody wants to do anything physical anymore. I, I wouldn't, who wants to write a physical check, right? There used to be these things that are called stamps. You have to like put a stamp on an envelope and like seal an envelope. You know, I've never owned a checkbook, Mark. Yeah, that is unbelievable to me. In my whole life, I've never owned a checkbook. Wow. I don't even know how to fill out one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is, it, you know, it is the best time ever to be alive. It really is. Um, the technician, Eric Peterson. What, what are you looking for to make a county easier? Well, I think the essentials, I mean, we've kind of talked about them, but you've got to have the information available to be able to mail the properties you want to mail. That's going to be an owner name, an address, an APN number, possibly a size, maybe an assessed value. Um, those things absolutely absolutely required in order to mail everything beyond that um really goes to making our lives easier um so you know when we talk about being able to file deeds with simplify when we talk about paying taxes online or being able to look up sales records online or pull um previous deeds online like those are all really helpful and they speed up our process um but they're not necessarily required, I guess. Okay. Okay. I, I like it. I like it. Um, Scott Todd, you get the last word on what you're looking for, for an easy, relatively easy county to work in. Uh, I mean, everything above, everything has already been mentioned. And, you know, one of the things that I do appreciate is uh, a good GIS map. Um, I think that's important. I think the, I think one of the other elements to that GIS map is not just having the GIS map there, but having something that's a little bit more specific, the ability to get the GPS coordinates, because when you can't find a piece of land it is the most frustrating thing ever. I, um, 
I own I own some land in a county where they don't have a good GIS map. In fact, they don't have a GIS map. And I called up the county and I said, hey, how do I find the property? And they're like, we don't know. And I said, you don't know where the property is? Okay, what about the plat map? And they go, we don't have any plat maps. Now this is a Texas county. It's extremely rural and they have no records. It seems, or at least they tell me they don't have any records. And I said, well, how do I find the property? And they said, well, you got to hire a surveyor. Okay, so the surveyor's got to then go out there and find the property and then you got to go find the survey. The place is a mess. It's just an absolute mess. Now, luckily, the people that we bought the land from, they gave us they gave us a very old survey. And from that very old survey, I can tell you that this land that I own is basically about a mile away from the U.S. Mexican border. And uh, beyond that, I can't really tell you I can't match it up to any Google Maps. I can't really see where the formation is because I have nothing to reference it across. I do have a section township and range. And th at that point, it becomes a treasure hunt. That's what it becomes is a treasure hunt. So, you know, being able to just to get something simple like the GPS coordinates is extremely helpful. I feel like Scott Bossman has an inappropriate joke here with you being in, in a mile away from the border. But look at the self-discipline. Look at him just not not taking the bait. I don't stir the pot anymore. I do it in very subtle ways from later. When oh. when Scott Bossman wants to stir the pot, he stirs the pot. That's the that's the lesson here. That's true. That's true. It's not up to you to get to to entice him to do it. He strikes <laughs> when he's ready. See, I'm not. I, I'm even questioning what he's drinking out of right there. That cup. What does that cup say? Anything special? Is there little signals that are that are going off right there that we should be? Not <laughs> I love it. Yeah. 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 Mike Zano knows. You know, if that's if there's no bourbon in that cup. You know, for nightcap then, you know, he's, he's relatively calm with the stirring. Uh, but what do you think, Mike Zeno? I'm not sure. I was just waiting for you to say something maybe about physical therapists or about pilots or something. I was, thought maybe <laughs> there'd be some, some, some sort of uh, comments on those things. Rocket, you're waiting for the shoe to drop, huh? You're, you're waiting for the left hook, the, the Podolsky left hook, right? Um, correct see mark what you've done to mike you've broken him. two weeks it only took was two weeks for you to break the, the the nicest guy on this podcast he's got no words yeah i and i can't tell you the the pride i take in that and um oh. you know it feels good it feels someone good. secretly told me that that I won't name any names who told me this, but they secretly told me that they can't wait for you to turn your attention over to Eric Peterson once again. It's been far too long. You know what? I want to ask Eric a question. What are you looking most forward to to the boot camp coming up in a couple of weeks? Let me see. Um, as you know, I'm probably not looking. Um, that much forward to giving my presentation but uh but i'll do it um and i'll do my best with it but generally speaking um you know i enjoy the the vip room working with the coaching students helping them through um different homework assignments and things that they get um while at boot camp and giving them feedback on on the work they've done and, and helping them grow their businesses uh it's also fun to to meet some of the the new people that come to boot camp and are just getting started with land and kind of hearing their stories and, and what they're interested in no absolutely and, and for those you know the, the toolkit even flight school i mean a little less for flight school but definitely toolkit people um that two and a half days of land investing immersion is is invaluable because on sunday everything is clear and just to have the opportunity to ask um, Mike and Scott questions directly and get those answered is amazing. And as, as well as all the other coaches, but Mike and Scott even take their, they do a working lunch just for Q and a. So that's literally two hours of just, 
you know, pure Mike and Scott, you know, goodness. So, I mean, it's fat free, it's low calorie, it's phenomenal. What a great way to spend your lunch, right? Um, you know, but before we go off the topic of, of what makes a good comedy, I think Scott Bossman brought up a good point, accepting online notarizations. So Scott Bossman, do you want to just mention that before we, we shift gears into our tip of the week? Yeah, I think a, another thing that uh, has become, well, it's very, very time efficient, right? Uh, and has become kind of a, uh, a benefit here the last couple of years is uh, the county's acceptance of online notarizations. Uh, if, if I'm, you know, at home on a Saturday and need to notarize a deed, man, I get on online notary.net and I have it done in 20 minutes. Is there, is there a charge to that? Sure. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good investment uh, on my end. Um, and then, you know, so I, I really uh, like working in counties now where those online notarizations are accepted. And you can even do, uh, if you need witnesses, they'll do witnesses as well uh, on these platforms. So That's amazing. I, I used, it used to be so awkward for me. I'd go to the bank mm -hmm. and I'd be doing a Florida deed and I'd have to get two witnesses. And I would literally just be like, hey, excuse me, to the people in line at the bank, would you mind witnessing this? They're like, what am I witnessing? I'm like, oh, it's just a deed. You know, there's literally no liability. You don't even have to, you know, it's such a silly thing, Scott Todd in Florida. Like, it's just anyone's signature. They're, they don't even get it. There's like no, no verification that they're the witness. Okay, well, I'll get on that, Mark. I'll, I'll take care of that. Sorry you had that problem. It's another. I don't know who to but uh, don't worry i'll make sure it's away. a government employee <laughs> <laughs> there we go <laughs> i think i think it's a bunch of them called you know representatives and senators i think it's a bunch of them yeah i mean who who thought that was a good idea in florida let's just annoy these these in, investors and make them have two witnesses on a deed but no one really knows who they are just as long as someone scribbles something on a piece of paper we'll feel better about it and that doesn't problem. happen in any other state, does it? It doesn't. It's, it's, you know, yeah. I'm telling you, the swamp does weird things. Right, Scott Todd? I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't know. Are we now turning the aim at Florida, the whole state of Florida? I don't think the we want to do that. Swamp state. Are they going to no, call you, it the swamp state now? You, we, you don't want 20 million Florida men coming after some Arizona dude. I'm just saying, you know. Swap man. Doesn't our reputation scare people anyway? That's a good point. I want to formally apologize to the state of Florida for this inappropriate joke. And 100% I was joking. Keep the witnesses on the deeds. I'm not bothered at all. It yeah, doesn't bother me one bit. It's, all, it's only a headache if you're not prepared, right? If you know you have to do it, it's kind of like flying on a budget airline. It's like... You get on a budget airline, people complain, oh, the seat doesn't recline. I got no leg room. And uh, guess what? If you know that going into it, it's all good. Nothing to worry well, about. I don't know that I've ever, even on a regular airline, had a problem with the seat not reclining. I wouldn't even notice, Tate. Oh, you don't recline your seat? Are we going here again, Scott? Not all saying. of us fly private, man. Not all of us fly private. Well, you know. Maybe you should, Tate. Maybe you should. I, I definitely think he should if he's going to be the person that reclines. Yeah, that's right. Why should the rest of us suffer? You know, Mark, the bank I go to, the notary, she goes and gets the witnesses, but it might be because, like government employees, I treat her very nicely. <laughs> that's, that. In, you know, and I think there's a lesson in there. It's a good business lesson in there treat every golden rule it treat everyone the way you'd want to be treated um as, as derek sivers likes to say don't don't live life as if it's your last day on earth live life as if everyone that you're interacting with it's their last day on earth Ooh, that is a good quote and um it's a really good reminder so you know for those of you that are still with us on the podcast once in a while it, it is worth staying on uh, through our shenanigans, because there is a, you know, a little... Maybe. Is that a death quote? 
No, it's not a death quote, but there is some wisdom that we, we drop now and then. Was so you could start the next podcast with that quote instead of tearing everyone down and then talking about it at the I, end. I don't remember Eric Peterson getting torn down at all. So, which leads us to this week's sponsor, Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up the mountain of land investing with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. He has done deals thousands of times. He will take you up that mountain quickly, safely, and efficiently. Oh, and by the way, the tuition for Flight School ain't gonna cost you nothing, guaranteed. You're gonna make that money back, 180 days or less. Just show us your work. Follow what Scott tells you to do. You can't lose. Learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Schedule a call with government employee Mike Zeno or the irascible Scott Bossman. Learn more. I remember when Eric was irascible. That, that, those days have, are gone now. I, you know, after all the, the stirring that Scott Bossman has done, the nightcap, come on, Mike Zeno. Saying. All right. Change right. names. But we are now at that point of the podcast. We're going to ask for the tip of the week a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. I actually have one. Do you guys want to know what it is? Yeah, because we have nothing. It's, we have nothing. I thought this was interesting. It's phrase.io. Oh, yeah, this is old school. This is old news. Yeah, man. I've heard this. Come on. This is this thing is I, I looked at this thing six months ago. OK. I rejected it already 10 times. Do dominate organic search results by being the best answer. Sign up free. Phrase feels like a next gen content tool that's not just exciting for search engine optimization, but for writers as well, in my mind, that's more important to create successful content. The first content optimization software your team will actually enjoy using. Cut your content research time from hours to seconds. Phrase automatically provides an intelligent outline for your target keywords. Simply input your topics and get the perfect recipe for your content to rake number one. Like, hey, is land investing a good investment? Why should I invest in raw land? Put that on your blog have phrase help you with writing the content. And certainly if you need more help, you can just email Scott Todd directly. So my, my advice is don't use it. I already did it and nothing happened, man. Just saying. Yeah. Um, it's okay, Mike, Mike, do you want to talk about your tip? It's just, I think this is a great tip. Just, uh, you can use it. There could be some purposes for this, but I think uh, it's great to just look at. If you go to this uh, person does not exist.com, every time you go there, refresh it, it's a new person that doesn't exist. It's really interesting. Yeah, that's, that's really cool with artificial intelligence right there. I mean, if you want um, to change your Facebook picture, that, you know, just be somebody else. I guess it's the website you go to. You just like pick a, pick a, pick a picture. That's actually a pretty good idea. Except you only get one picture. Well, you keep refreshing it and you get a new picture every time. It's like these people don't exist. It's kind of interesting. It's not bad. Um, what do you think, uh, Eric Peterson? I like it. I'm going to tell my Facebook team about it because when they create new accounts, they can go grab a profile image. There you go. There you go. Well, I appreciate everybody taking my good natured hazing very well. And um, I thought it was a, a, a good topic. And um, hopefully the listeners are getting value. If you are, there's three little favors you can do. Follow us. Um, then certainly rate and send us a review. Send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you the course on wholetailing, how to double your money 30 days or less for free. Um, Scott Bossman, are we good? Yeah, we're excellent. All right. Eric, are we good? We are great. Tate? Yep, all good. 
Mike? Doing great. Scott Todd, are we good? We are, man. We're we're good. We're great. We're golden. All we're right. Phrased out. You're fra- <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> All right, let's do this. One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. See, this is what happens when Tariya's not on the podcast. We're just what? I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not as kind as I normally would be. So she keeps she holds you accountable to the kind she's the kindness fairy. She's kind of like she, yeah, kind of, right? The dynamic changes. This is, you know, it's like an old boys network now. It 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 feels like uh just being a little critical here. This podcast feels like it's like missing something like it's like what is it me? Is it me? It, or, can we just be honest? Like, can we just critique it? I don't know if it's even appropriate to critique it while we're recording, but let's, we're an open book. It, 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 I'd, I'd say it's not one of our best podcasts for sure. The best. I, I don't know. I mean, I, you, just, you just feel like the energy wasn't there. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It's almost like, you see, if it got to the end of, a, I don't know, a Hollywood production, they'd be like, just can it. Just can't. But not us, because we did it. We did it. We did our best. And this proves a very important point, in my opinion, Mark, that everybody should learn from this podcast, which is done beats perfect. This is the classic example. Done beats perfect. We did it. It's not perfect. We tried our hardest. I, I agree. I, I mean, I would give the podcast, if we were going to grade it, this is a C minus. That being said, right, there's still some value in here for people that want to know about what makes a good county. And yeah, true. Hey, Mark. We, we don't forget C's get degrees. C's get <laughs> degrees. Oh, yeah. oh. That's I right. think we should one time do the podcast completely in reverse. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Like a memento, like a memento podcast. We'll start with this and then we'll go into the let freedom ring and then we'll go into the answers. And at the very end, we'll reveal the question. Uh-huh. Next. You know what? I think next week we should do that. That's a great idea. That's an that's an A plus podcast idea. Do, do we reveal the question or do we let everybody so guess what the question? Everybody is? has to guess what the question is. But yeah. if we don't know the question, how, how are we going to? Well, I guess we'll know the question. You'll have to text yeah. it to us. But then, then essentially, what will happen is at the end of the podcast, when we say our topic was, then the the listener will have to figure out what it was. Right? We could pick a cool topic that would make that really fun too. That would be really cool. With some different twists. Ooh, lots yeah. Of twists. Lots of twists. Maybe we have the introduction. Plan. I feel like if Christopher Nolan had a podcast, this would be his idea. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe the, the question has nothing to do with land either. Wow. Right. Absolutely. That would be genius if it had nothing to do with land and it still came across as if it did have to do with land. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. That's good. And I'm kind of shocked this podcast, considering all the hazing everyone got, no one made fun of my hair. It's shocking. Well, it's because we heard how you speak to your, your hairstylist and none of us wanted to go down that road. She, she, she did find a, a better time for me. It worked. <laughs> yeah. She texted me back. You must don't be a don't good worry. Tipper. You're probably a great tipper. That's what it is. I, I, you know what? I'm a pretty good tipper, but I'm really generous come the holidays. Uh, so, a long way. Yeah. So she, you know, she knows if she puts up with me for a whole year, there's going to be a payoff for it. Maybe that's the lesson with the county. Send them great presents on the holidays. You can't do that. You mean they they can't accept it. You can't, you can't, you can't give government employees. Um, I gifts. Them muffins and no one they didn't send them back they ate them that that you can you can do but you Go can't send an individual you can send the office yes food right but you can't send it one individual employee like let's say the recorder uh quote unquote gift so that i think it'd be kind of weird you better off doing the whole office no you're definitely better off doing the whole office what legally speaking you have to do the whole office otherwise they they can't legally accept it Mike, how I mean, does that work at the fire? This station? isn't Boston. 
Yeah, so there's there's a dollar amount we're not supposed to accept, but it's per person. So a lot of times people bring down, you know, they bring food and stuff like that. And uh, sometimes they'll bring a gift card or, or whatnot. But most often we get lots of food deliveries. But but does that do you guys write down the address and go, okay, well, this address brought us food, but this one has not. No, it's typically after we've helped somebody. So the good deed has been done. Oh, okay, okay. Because, you know, like I told you a few weeks ago, I was out putting out a fire with my feet and no yes. one's putting any food or anything. So I'm just saying, I'm still just kind of curious if it was like just me being out there in the community and they see me, or if I actually have to go to someone's house and like hose down, hose down the water. Just, yeah, you know, probably. You probably yeah. need to wear your shirt. Because Start right away. now, the person that would probably reward you would be a government employee. And we know how they are. I mean, because you oh, did, yeah. there was a government property that you helped. Well, they're probably they're probably aggravated that I put a fireman out of work for the day. Oh yeah, well we show up and it's like uh, you know the police officer like yeah I put it out my extinguisher. Yeah, <laughs> I don't look arrest this, people. Look at this truck, baby. <laughs> we want to let the water flow, man. We yeah. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna arrest somebody now. Get in the back of the truck. Don't run away though. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, yeah, that's garbage, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it. Kind of, look, I'm not. I, I, I'm sure that you know when the sirens blare, that that you get some you know, like emergency rush going through your your body. Like we gotta go, wow. and then you know you get there and here's the police officer. He's already put out the fire. You're like, dude, thanks for nothing. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, First of all, it is a great stress relief. You know, imagine how you all feel in traffic, right? Imagine being able to blow an air horn, everybody moves. That does feel pretty yeah. good. Oh yeah, yeah. You can yeah. clear traffic out, and that that does have a feeling that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah pretty good. <laughs> yeah, pretty. Yeah. And and actually, Larry David did make fun of that in his last episode of Curb. Because yeah. So. Anyways, this is fun. So look, even C minus podcasts are okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll ship this. Learned. There's a we'll lesson. Try next time. <laughs> we'll definitely try harder next time. This is this is a lesson for Tria. This Don't is... miss the podcast. Because yeah. well, the Easter listener egg. is is punished. This is an Easter egg podcast. There's some real gold in there. You just gotta find it. That's right. And happy Easter, everybody. Hope you guys had a great Easter. It's two weeks after Easter, by the way, time they hear this. But you guys don't know that. You got, or whatever. We better hang up before we say something else terrible. Yay. Thanks, thanks everybody. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttaub.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.